when I first started uh, here at LaVenture, uh, it was the year of the building being remodeled. And so one real benefit to that was that they put some technology in the building that wasn't in the other buildings. It was really the first time that every classroom had a projector mounted on the ceiling, for instance. And that really did transform my teaching at, uh, as a teacher to be able to have things uh, at my fingertips, like images from the web or videos that I could uh, click with the students. And not only just that I could plan to show a video, but if something came up, I had the ability to look one up in a very few minutes and then present it to my students. If you look at the lesson I presented today, uh, you had a lot of kids at tables with a photocopied handout and a pencil. And you would be thinking, you know, this is a not a technology infused lesson. But what I was able to do with a projector and a document camera and the computer was in about a 35 minute time, I was able to take the same handout they had and I was able to read from it and show it. I was able to switch from the camera to the learning target on the computer and then I was able to switch to show them the resources that are available to them and it's the same page that they will go to. It's not me writing down a web address and they know they can get to all that stuff. They can replay it anytime they want. They can get it from home. They can get it from grandma's house if that's where the computer is or from the school library. A lot of times the question comes up is like, should we spend the money on technology or should we spend it on more books? And I've heard experts that I really respect argue that if we want to increase, for instance, reading scores, we will spend the money on books and not technology. And in my opinion, it's not the either or. That we are, whether we like it or not, in the 21st century. And that the technology tools for our students are a must or they are just going to be behind. Uh, just this week, uh, we had a student that broke a finger in volleyball. And it's her writing hand. And she's six weeks of not being able to write. So we just go check out a pair of USB headphone microphone. I spent 10 minutes during a prep showing her how to get to an online service where she could record and edit her voice. And now if she needs to hand in work that she can't have somebody write for her, she can just go get her notes and speak it and email that to her teacher. About 20 to 25 percent of our students are migrant bilingual. Their first language is not English and we have students that read at a fourth grade level in our eighth grade classes. We will, of course, endeavor to find text for them, and I do have text that they can access. But for a variety of sources, they can also go and, and, and look at an entire database of online video. They have access to the content that can be spoken to them. We want them to engage with the text. We are, throughout the day, teaching them how to deal with that text, but they don't have to be totally tied to it. The technology allows them to break away from that, and we get successes like that every day using technology. If I went home and told my parents, I would say, I, w I made a video with my friends and it was like really, really funny and people will laugh at it because we like probably tripped or messed up on stuff and we can show that on like the bloopers and stuff. It was pretty cool and we can like do the slides and put like a pretty cool picture and yeah. Our students are children of the 21st century and they live in a world that is saturated with technology for good or for bad. And it's a world they have to navigate and they have to be able to get their hands on technology in order to learn how to do that, not only responsibly, as we want them to be good citizens using technology, but in a way that is productive and efficient as well. If uh, our students don't know how to be responsible, they are not going to be welcome in institutions of higher learning or as employees because these networks are such an integral part not only of learning institutions but of business institutions as well because their bosses are probably not going to be saying I need a PowerPoint for our presentation. What their boss is going to say is I need a four minute video that's going to knock every member of the board's eyes out and they're going to need to leave our high schools and colleges being able to take instructions like that. Um, I believe that we would be using technology in the future a lot actually because most of the businesses now have technology in them as it is. And if things are going to keep growing and being more advanced, then it's going to have to take technology with it. The expectation is that they will know how to responsibly use technology tools and that they will be leaders in the creativity with these tools. And whether you want to argue that that is what the new economy will be or just what somebody who is an educated person in the 21st century will be required to do to participate in the economy, we, we, we need these tools for our schools. I don't see it as either or, I see it as a must for teaching in the 21st century and more importantly for learning in the 21st century. Yeah.